We love the boys, which makes fun of celebrity culture, social media politics, and sometimes even superhero stories in a very gross and often funny way. But if there's one thing we could ask for in season four of the boys, it's that the girls are just as flawed as the boys. The TV version does have a good number of flawed or outright bad female characters. This is because some of the male characters from the comic book series have been turned into female characters for the show. This and much more in today's video. First, let's talk about Queen May, Annie, and and Kimiko, the three main women characters. The three main female characters in The Boys are Queen May, Dominique McElligot, a member of the world's most famous superhero team, The Seven, Starlight, Annie, Aaron Moriarty, who joins The Seven at the beginning of season one, and Kimiko, Karen Fukuhara, a former child soldier who was turned into a superhero against her will by a group of terrorists. Kimiko was first called The Female, but the TV original character Mesmer figured out what her real name was about halfway through the season. There are a lot of nicknames in the superhero world, and Frenchie's real name wasn't found out until season three. But it's nice that a character isn't just known by their gender. Even though all three characters have physical powers, they have often been put in the victim role, and their story arcs have often been about regaining their control. The writers have done a great job of making Annie seem like a survivor and someone who is taking charge of her story. At the end of season three, Annie left the seven and joined the boys, but she still had to be sexually assaulted, threatened, and humiliated to get there. In season three, Kimiko also took charge. She was a victim of child trafficking, and when she was injected with Compound V against her will, she felt like her body had been violated. This is why she hated her powers so much. After losing her powers, she chose to get them back, and she told Annie how important it was that this time it was her choice. And Queen Maeve, who, along with Starlight, was the most sympathetic of the seven, not counting the short-lived supersonic R.I.P., was able to escape what was becoming a pattern of being hurt by Homelander, who wanted to get her eggs by almost killing her, which gave her the chance to fake her own death. It let them show that they have girl power. It's great to see these women in the story taking charge. This is a story that cares about these characters and isn't just a visual attempt at a forced girl power moment, like the boys' great parody Girls Get It Done sequence. But Starlight and Kimiko still aren't quite right in one important way. They don't have enough flaws. Kimiko worries about how violent she can be and doesn't want to be Butcher's gun. Also, Starlight could have done more to stop her friend Alex from joining the Seven. But while Frenchie gets caught up in drugs and old grudges, Mother's Milk struggles with his temper and tries to keep good relationships with his ex-wife and daughter. Huey abuses Compound V because he feels weak because of his relationship with Annie. And Butcher will go almost to any lengths to get what he wants while fighting the urge to act like his abusive father. Kimiko and Annie are just too nice and sensible. They are often the conscience heart and voice of reason for the boys. Even though Queen Maeve is a much more flawed character than A-Train, the Deep, or Black Noir, she is ten times more moral and good-hearted. Compare them to the list of characters who were men in the comics but became women in the TV show. Here we get to see some interesting and very flawed female characters. Stormfront and Victoria Newman are bad guys who are selfish, cocky, and cruel. Grace Mallory is more on the side of good in a broad sense, but she is also someone who keeps secrets and can be angry and resentful. And the way Madeline Stilwell is portrayed on the show is fascinating. Her power over Homelander is gendered because she plays up his breast milk fetish while she seems to switch between controlling him and being afraid of him. Annie, Kimiko, and even Maeve look like angels compared to this group. Stories about their own faults. Don't get us wrong, we love Kimiko and Frenchie together, and we also want Annie and Huey to get together. And Queen Maeve should be left alone to enjoy her well-deserved retirement in peace. Though we doubt she will be. But what we'd really like to see in season four is character arcs for Annie and Kimiko that come from their own mistakes, just like the ones the boys who are actually boys get. It's been great to see them get over outside problems and grow up, but now let's see them get over some problems inside themselves. Let's see Kimiko have trouble trusting people, or maybe a story where she wants to forget her past, but it turns out to be the key to solving a problem. Let's see what problems Annie has with Huey that aren't his fault. Does she hate him for getting her to stay in the seven for so long, which indirectly led to Alex's death. Does being one of the boys make her miss her teen role as Starlight, which was more feminine? Is she ever tempted to go jump on Soldier Boy until he knocks her out of commission? The show is called The Boys, so it's clear that it's about boys, but we think it would be really interesting to see the female members of the group explored as deeply flawed and often misguided people, just like the male members, and not always as victims, survivors, or voices of the boys' conscience. 
Squad. In related news, The Boys Season 3 secretly set up Gen V spinoff. A quick Easter egg in Season 3, The Boys set up the upcoming college spinoff show, Gen V. In the third season of the hit superhero satire on Prime Video, Vought, new things were added to Vought's world. The most important thing was when Soldier Boy came out, but when Temp V was made, it gave Billy Butcher and Huey Campbell powers and changed how they worked. American Hero, a competition show to find the next members of the seven, even made fun of American Idol. When you think about how Gen V, a spin-off of The Boys, is coming together, these additions take on a slightly different meaning. Since Gen V was announced, fans have been looking for any way that The Boys could set it up. This meant that references to A-Train's former coach were linked to the spin-off. Because that tease was so vague, not everyone who watched The Boys thought that Season 3 set up the spin-off in any way. Most people missed a secret part of The Boys Season 3 that set up Gen V, though. Huey goes to Red River Institute, a group home for powered kids who don't have parents or caretakers, in the second episode of Season 3 of The Boys. After telling a lie about him and Starlight wanting to adopt a soup child, he gets to see the Red River database while he is there. As the list of children looking for homes is flipped through, there is a profile for Maddie M., who is played by Jazz Sinclair. Victoria Newman also grew up in Red River. Sinclair was already known to be in the cast of Gen V. So, the third season of The Boys set up the college spinoff by teasing Maddie, the mysterious soup. Lastly, will people from The Boys work with Gen V? One of the biggest questions about Gen V is whether or not any of the actors from The Boys will be in the crossover. So far, all that has been said about the college spinoff is that new actors and characters will have roles in it. Maddie, played by Jazz Sinclair, is said to be one of the main characters, and Golden Boy, played by Patrick Schwarzenegger, will also have a big part in Gen V. Chance Perdomo, Lizzie Broadway, Maddie Phillips, London Thor, Derek Le, and Asa German are also in the cast. But so far, there has been no word that any of the characters from The Boys' Soups or other shows will show up. Gen V, a spinoff of The Boys, will connect to the events of Season 3 and even hint at some storylines for Season 4. However, it is still unknown if Homelander, Victoria Newman, or anyone else will show up. There are definitely some ways for The Boys and Gen V to work together and bring the two shows closer together. If there are any familiar faces in the college spinoff, they might be Vought employees, like the new CEO Ashley, or even the new version of Black Noir. With Jazz Sinclair's photo cameo setting up Gen V in The Boys Season 3, viewers should at least be sure that other connections will be made. Unfortunately, guys, that is all the time we had for today. Hope you enjoyed the show. Comment below if you agree that the female characters need to be a little bit more flawed. Also, make sure to like the video and hit the subscribe button to stay updated on all the latest content. Cheers!